This is Comic Geek Speak, Book of the Month Club, Episode 8, Aranya. And welcome to Comic Geek Speak. I'm Brian Deemer. I'm Kevin Moyer. I'm Matt. I'm Shane Kelly. I'm Jamie D. I'm Peter Rios. And this is our special Book of the Month Club discussion of Aranya, Volume 1, Heart of the Spider. And for someone who has not listened to any of our Book of the Month Club episodes before, this will be chock full of spoilers, so wait if you haven't read it. So, there were a couple reasons... (laughs) That's it! (laughs) A couple reasons why we chose Aranya, because uh, for many people it didn't... Uh, strike them as something that uh, would be worthy of a book of the month, but actually is a very uh, strong candidate because it qualifies in many categories. It's a new character, which we are often talking about how there should be new characters. Uh, it uh, it could be aimed at younger audiences, and we constantly say how there needs to be stuff out there for younger readers to lure them into the lifelong trap that is comic reading. And also, it's a digest, and a lot of people uh, have never uh, read a digest, and uh, so we covered a lot of bases with Aranya. So, who yeah. wants to, where should we start? Let, let me ask you this about digest first, since this is the first one I've ever read. Does the color come out darker than it usually yeah. would? Uh, I think sometimes it's a little darker, because uh, they print it on, these, on this paper, but like I have the Gravity Digest, and that was printed on higher quality paper because Gravity was only five issues instead of six. So they charged the same, yet it has slightly nicer paper. Yeah, because I noticed that too while I was reading this, that it was very dark. And, and, and I knew why, but it's very hard to read and, and, and look at everything. It really, you really have to put a lot of extra focus on that. And that is, uh, to me, a drawback on it. Yeah, th- just that, and, you know, I, I do have um, Sentinel Digest to read that I picked up, and I haven't even looked at it. But maybe that one won't be quite as dark or something. Like it I didn't notice it on Sentinels. On Sentinel, I noticed it on Runaways. Uh, but I think it only really comes into play on the pages that are darker pages. Right. The black kind of bleeds and dark or colors. something. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and and a lot of this stuff happens at night, so it, it affected Aranya yeah. more than because like the these others. pages that are in the desert right. and all bright, they it look looks fine. totally fine. Right. I so, agree with you. You know, it's a little bit of a trade off for the price factor. I, I was just yeah. curious. Yeah, I mean, because cause, I mean, some of these when they come out, you know, they're fifty percent off or thirty-five or forty percent off. I mean, they're pretty darn cheap. So, right. is this the the big revelation in here of the corporation? Is that the big connection with Spider-Man that we know of so far? I guess the whole Ezekiel yeah, connection. That whole like I I, I was core. looking for more for, and maybe there's more in in other issues, but of course, since I only read this, I thought that was kind of like oh, okay. Now, that wasn't the company that Ezekiel had in the Amazing Spider-Man issues, or was it? Yeah. That was his it's, own company, right? Well, it was it was either a f- faction of this, or it is the exact same company. Because wasn't there... Because uh, I, I, I didn't have the issues, and I don't have the issues anymore. Like, I thought that whole building was, like, cleared out when Ezekiel went away. They did. So I didn't know if it was exactly the same one. And The way I went... From reading this, I take it it's the same company. Because they said since Ezekiel's gone and, you know... So that I don't know if it's the same name. I don't recall. Or like that myself. the same building, maybe. But it's, it's not the probably same. not the same building. Okay. But yeah, because I remember too when he left. You know, when that, when he was gone in Amazing, that they did they closed up shop and, and moved out of that location because of the attention that was drawn and the whole thing that yeah. transpired there. Um, but from my understanding and reading this, that this is the same company. Same it's just company. that he's no longer there. Obviously, uh, to those who have read Amazing Spider-Man. So, <clears throat> what do you think of that? What do you think? I wanted to ask you because they show a picture of Spider Woman in that one hallway. I know, and that to me, eh, which I guess you know, there's you know, it's a couple ways you can take. A couple well, ways exactly, you can take it. Exactly, it could be something that they just have because it's a spider related character, um, or it could be something that's possibly tied into. I don't know if they would get that far into it, especially with them re- kind of retooling and um, finally defining her origin right now with Spider Woman origin because she has like three different you know, kind of vague, convoluted origins since her conception. So um, now that they're starting to clarify that, I don't see I don't see how that would tie into this. 
But didn't she lose her powers? Isn't that wasn't that one of the storylines? She lost her powers in that in that six page or that giant size. That's where that guy had you know confronted her mm-hmm. about giving her her powers back and you know trade off for yeah. you know being a double agent kind of thing. Well, I'm wondering if if that's maybe what it was considering the picture. There were pictures of the hunters. Those were all past hunters, and maybe since she lost her powers, they had to find a new hunter. And that's what, you know, maybe she was. They were saying she wasn't originally a hunter, but now she's no longer a hunter. The only thing that, that confuses me about that is the fact that um, she's never, that has never been brought into anything that she's been in so far mm-hmm. that, um, that she's been, you know, like when that guy had confronted her to give her her powers back, he made that deal with her. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a total different mentality from what you read with them dealing with, uh, you know, Aranya. Yeah. Um, so it seemed to me like that was a little more contrived and more like through Hydra than it was like with this WebCorp or whatever that's, you know, uh, has supported and, and brought Aranya into their mix as their hunter. Um, but, I'm, I, you know, again, there's no clarification on that yet, so you don't know. There could be something, they could just link it together, or like you said, it just could be an ex- obscure thing that the artist threw in because it's a spider-related character. Yeah, because they don't even have a plaque, like, no. and they go out of the way I tried not to, to have a yeah. plaque. It, well, it's the covered with there, a, it's covered with a word balloon. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. Like, all the other plaques you can see, and that one yeah. just happens Speaking to of be. that, this one next to it, R- Ralph Thompson, 1967-1969, looks like Spider-Man. Who, who's right. that? But it's very, I don't know, because it's real dark, but it has the eyes that are similar to right. Spider-Man. But, you know, there's never been... Of course, now that's, you, you're taking that into con- concept that 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 plaque says 1969. So I guess in Marvel history, Peter Parker wouldn't be around yet. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, right. You know, right. In, in their terms of years. So that would be before Peter Parker. And it's not a very clear picture as far as you can see the costume, yeah. but just the eyes you can tell are a complete nod to Amazing Spider-Man. Did anyone else have a problem with the part of the story where they just keep stringing her along and not telling her anything for being a kid? No, the, the, I think the biggest thing as far as the whole affiliation with the corporation and her that struck me as odd and didn't fit well was when she went on her training. And then she went to her dad and goes, oh, I got an internship, you know, and, and you signed the forms and stuff, so I got to go away this weekend. And then he's kind of questioning a little bit, then he goes, well, okay, I really don't like it, and blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, well, if I have a 15-year-old daughter. I want to know where this place is. Who is it? What's involved? You know, I just wouldn't let my 15-year-old go away for a weekend with somebody you don't even know. You know, as far as a parent thing, I thought that was kind of a wrong message to oh, throw yeah. out there. And it really kind of stood out to me as I'm reading it, maybe because I'm a parent of a, of a daughter. But I just, that's something that clicked me. I thought his father, her father, should, especially being who he is and how they set him up in this book. An investigative reporter. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he would not just, like, you know, accept her what she says and just go like, oh, okay, you know, Okay, right. you can go. <laughs> right. So we- I... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Oh. Do we want to go around maybe and just give an overall view of what we thought of it? That way we, the listeners know kind of where we're coming from, and then we can jump back like into some points and things. might be a good yeah. place to start. Sure. All right. Well, I think Mark Brooks's artwork is fantastic, and uh, I'm now going to be ordering the, the first trade is solicited this month for the new X-Men that he's mm-hmm. drawing. So I... After looking at this, it's like, and yeah, I'm going to order that trade because I want to see more Mark Brooks artwork. Uh, as far as the story goes, I really enjoyed it. Again, it was I, I took it uh, very much at face value. It's just a light-hearted, uh, easy-to-follow story about a girl who gets some superpowers and it happens to be somehow maybe connected to Spider-Man, which is intriguing. It's a new character. It's uh, um, continuity free, and uh, which is always fun because I can't remember anything when I read stuff. <laughs> so uh, I had a blast with it, and I am absolutely going to get uh, go out and get volumes two and three. Uh, well, when three becomes available, because I want to read more. I want to know. I, I really enjoyed it. I, the more and more that I read comics, the more and more that I'm enjoying new things without all the the baggage of continuity while i love continuity as a as a history fan you know that's cool to me but i like just being able to read a story and not going damn it i don't know what's going on because i missed something and i had there's 30 years of legion that i have no idea what's happened and you know i don't understand all that so it's just nice to just be able to go it's all right here you can buy this and you know everything that anybody knows because there aren't any secrets that you can't that you missed because it's all in here and i kind of like i like that it's the same way with gravity it's just it's right there it's right in front of you 
I uh, I agree with you. Mark Brooks has been an artist I've always had an eye on since he started working on a lot of the Marvel um, adventures. And, and uh, in fact, that's where I I uh, really first recognized him and his work was in he was doing the Marvel Age Spider Man, doing the covers and some of the interiors. Oh, right. and, and I was just like floored. I bought them even though they were the retellings of the original stories. But I loved his art so much. I, I really enjoyed the way he drew Spider Man and stuff. So. Um, I knew going into this that you know I was going to be pleased with the artwork, which I which I was, um, and you can see uh, uh, some of this, his drawings. To me, it almost appears to me that it's almost drawn a little bit more um, animeish, uh, childlike kind of way, and that's no cut on Mark Brooks whatsoever. But it just seems that fits the format because I feel that when I was reading this, even though I could read it and I enjoyed it reading the story, I could tell it was kind of geared for the younger audience. Right. Um, which is cool, you know. I think it's done well in regards to, like you say, you know where it's coming from, and you know kind of what their goals were. So, like, you could, you don't have to be a teenager to read this and 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 enjoy it. Um, however, I think it's geared for them, and, and it, they can enjoy it, and and even younger than that. So, I think it does kind of capture a, a an element and a mark of the industry that you know that we've talked about before. That there could be more things like this uh, to encompass younger re- younger readers. Um, to me, the story was it was okay. It was good. Um, I liked some of the things they drew in, like with the whole Amazing Spider-Man. I didn't know that was part of it. Because when, when I first opened it up, I saw it was like consultant uh, J. Michael Straczynski, which I know Fiona has worked with Straczynski and, and ghostwritten with him and also has uh, helped out on Amazing Spider-Man. But I didn't know that this was tied into that. So um, I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, the origin, you could see the, 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 I don't know if they were homages or nods to certain elements um you know the teenager getting the spider powers and and other elements of the story that were kind of of other character origins you know so it's kind of like a meld of of a couple different characters um so in a way that kind of was like no it doesn't seem in a way it has its own little originality but it doesn't seem all that original um and so i i did enjoy it i'm i'm not enthused to go fly out and buy the rest of them. Um, I don't think it's a bad character. I think she's written well. I like the way that um, they wrote her, that she's, um, the way when she was being confronted by um, the people at the corporation, especially that the guy who's like the, the top guy who she had to answer to, I forget his name, but, you know, how she kind of questioned him and, you know, made him start thinking about things rather than her him being the opposing figure. Right. So she's she's a smart cookie and, you know, but she's, Still a cool character. Um, I love the the costume thing at the end. That that was funny as hell. You know, with all the different costumes she was trying on. And yeah. Stuff. So I'd be intrigued to read more of it. I just don't need to fly out and go get it. Um, now, th- are the next ones after this being in trade or in digest? Digest. In digest. It's all it's all digest. And this is the first true digest I've read. Um, and I and I totally understand the market for it. I totally understand. Uh, especially for ch- for younger audience, it's cheaper for them to get. It's easy for them to carry around in their backpacks or whatever, and and you know it's it's fully accessible. Um, I'm I'm still not a big fan of digests. I I will read them, but I I I prefer a trade. Uh, I prefer the larger format. But I truly understand, you know, the digest and the importance, and and I'm sure it does uh, have an effect on the industry um, being printed in those formats. I just wish they would offer it kind of both ways, but. I don't know how financially that would be uh, practical for them, but um, that's it. I don't know. For me, uh, I wasn't really overly impressed with it. First of all, I had problems getting past, and the same thing goes with um, why I can't read Ultimate Spider-Man. I can't read the the kid dialogue. Um, Too much for you? No, it's just, it irritates me. If it's I, getting too old. That's, a, it, that's it. It, it kind of took me back to when I went to see um, The Girl Next Door and uh, The Girl Next Door in, um, in the theater, which is pretty much a high school story. And But I saw it when it came out in the theater, and I realized I, I no longer have those that attachment to the high school years that I can relate to some of the stuff going on there. And that's kind of what I feel when I read Ultimate Spider-Man and what, what I felt with this is that the dialogue is just, it's too... I don't want to say juvenile, but it's younger than I am, so it's hard for me to appreciate her language that she's using. But having said that, uh, one of the things I did kind of like is I felt more of an homage to 
Buffy the Vampire Slayer as opposed to Spider-Man with her origins because I was kind of under the impression that she always had them, but it wasn't really sent with it. Once she was killed and brought back, that's when they kind of really activated that she, she's always had them. Um, I, I kind of don't like the corporation that there's always been hunters and because uh, I was never a big fan of the Ezekiel um, character just because, to me, I always liked it plain and simple with Spider-Man's origin not to add all this other possible mystical stuff or, or whatnot, the bloodline. Um, and there's some stuff that's currently going on that, right now with the other that I can see coming through in this as well. I, you know, I won't give any of that stuff away. Uh, one of the things I'd have to say it irritated me more than anything else, and I always hate it when it's always those convenient things, is that her name, Aranya, just happens to mean the spider. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's too much of a stretch for me. To, to, to buy, especially when they're like, oh man, that means the spider. Uh, and I know it's wrong to say, but just to kind of sum up the, the last bit is going back to the costumes. There's just something about her in that Wonder Woman costume. That, <laughs> you knew you weren't going to get away with it. No, hey, you know what? There's just I looked at that and I was like, oh man, I know that she's supposed to be 15, but there's just... And her, her dialogue right there was meant right for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, um, I agree with Matt on a lot of those points. Um, I felt it lent itself very much to Buffy, which I thought not not that they ripped it off, but I thought it was almost too easy for them to write like that. Um, for me, the the coloring actually did take away from it because I found it hard to focus on the artwork, although I liked what I saw in the lighter parts, um, which is why I asked if normally this stuff does come out darker because I wonder if I got the regular issues when they came out if I would have enjoyed it more. But the artwork is nice. Um, I didn't like the the part with the father and the going away that 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 whole interaction again maybe being a father even though my kids are young I don't I wouldn't have done that at all um, I thought that they left some holes with here they are toting this kid around and it wasn't obvious to the big cheeses in the in the courtroom that she still hadn't been told anything and you're like halfway through the book before they kind of realize that um, I don't know that I cared about her enough that I would go out and get it like. Don't get me wrong. If if somebody said, "Here's the second volume. Here, take it and read it." Yeah, I'd read it, but I probably will not go out and buy these. Um, I would read it to find out what happens, but I uh, I don't need to buy it myself to do it. Um, I just don't know that I care about her enough, and and I'm gonna kind of backpedal by saying because there's so much else out there right now between Marvel and DC that is good. That if this came out maybe two three years ago. Maybe I would have liked it more or given it more of an open-minded chance. But there's so much else out there to read that is good that I don't need to pick up more stuff to read. But like I said, if somebody said, hey, oh, I have the second volume. Would you like to read it? Yeah, I'll take it and I'll read it. But I, I, I don't see myself going out and buying these. The, the, the young aspect, that didn't bother me so much. I, don't, I definitely don't know that I like the whole Ezekiel tie-in just because I was so disappointed with what ended up happening with that character. Um, I was so excited for him to be some kind of duplicate, I don't want to say future Peter Parker, but some kind of duplicate that has gone through all this all his life and just decided to remain hidden. But to have a whole bloodline that goes back thousands or hundreds of years, whatever it is, I, I don't know. Um, I agree with Matt, it was too convenient that her name just happened to be The Spider. Her last name is Corazon, which is Heart. So it's... Spider Heart. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> um... I did enjoy the costume thing. I thought that was hilarious. I can see where I think my kids might enjoy it more if if giving it to them as they're growing up and they say, oh, okay, I can relate to this more. Not that I didn't relate to it, but I just didn't... It didn't hold my attention like, like other things would. Um, but I think a younger audience definitely would get into this more. So it, it's okay. I'd give it a three out of five, but again, I don't see myself going out to get them. Okay, I guess it comes to me now. Um, I will let something out of the bag, though. This was not our first choice for a digest. I mean, Runaways was, but unfortunately there was some stuff that happened that uh, we couldn't do that. So I went home after we had our little meeting, and uh, you know, I was like, oh, Runaways, I can't wait to finally get a chance to read this. And then two, like, two days later, the banner comes up, and it's like Aranya. And I was like, what? I don't want to freaking read Aranya. Who the hell chose that? And, um, but then I stopped and I thought, well, no, wait a second. One of the reasons we did Book of the Month Club was to get books into people's hands that maybe they wouldn't read. 
I definitely wouldn't wouldn't have picked up Aranya. Uh, and I, so I decided I'm going to go into this with an open mind. I'll sit down and read it, and I'll I'll make up you know I'll make the decision. And I got to admit, I actually I really did enjoy it. It was it's perfect if you're looking for that book for your teenage daughter or you know preteen daughter that that. You know, because a lot of people ask us, what should I get? You know, I have a 8- to 10-year-old daughter who, wants, who I want to read comics. Pick this up. I don't really didn't see anything in here that I thought was too objectionable. Yeah. Um, I thought they did a good job. Yeah, I mean, I can see where your parent, you know, with, with two guys who are parents in this room kind of rub against the wall with, with the way the parent reacted. And I, now that I think about it, it was, you know, was kind of convenient. But I also can see... In other words, it was it was one of those where I thought her father trusted her enough to realize that you know she wasn't going in you know she wasn't smoking crack or going off and being you know a teenage prostitute or something. So you know, and and, and it's one of those. I mean, it's you, you always see that story where it's you know the mother's passed away, the father you know trusts the daughter into you know doing stuff, and then, you know anyway. Uh, as far as origins go, I was I would say Buffy mixed with a little bit of Veronica Mars. Um, as far as like the investigative reporter, and she was smart enough to do a lot of investigation of the corporation before she went into it. Um, as far as the corporation goes, I think this actually works a lot more than it did in Amazing Spider-Man. I have I, I thought uh, it works here a little bit better. Um, it, it definitely ties in, like Matt was saying, to what they're doing right now in the other. I saw a lot of that because I just finished the other today um, and it kind of uh, kind of uh, promotes JMS's um, theory that you know there's there's a spider based it wasn't you know just an accident of a radioactive spider binding him there was a, a whole kind of uh, deeper background to it uh, the artwork was good uh, passable I mean uh, passable sounds like I didn't like it but it was good I mean for what it was it was more anime um, based cartoony than it was you know, a, real, a more reality-based. Um, again, I'm I'm of this um, I'm of the school that I'm don't think I'm going to run out and get it. But uh, convention season is coming up right now. Half-price trades are everywhere, and 50-cent boxes are places. So if I stumble across it and find the second volume, or if I find the actual well, the actual comics, I may you know pick them up and and read them. But I will definitely, I, I mean, I give it a thumbs up, and it is definitely, you know, something to look for, something to give that teenage girl that wants a superhero comic. It, it was, I thought it was well written. Uh, as far as the teenage language and that kind of stuff, while I'm way too old to relate to it, I could understand it. I had no problem with it. I mean, working in a comic shop, you get, you know, you get kids coming in, so you, you kind of try to keep up with the lingo. <laughs> Try to stay hip. True that. Yeah, biatch. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I, with that. I, I definitely give it a thumbs up, and I, you know, this is again to me exactly what we're doing here at, at Book of the Month Club, putting books in the hands of people who normally put probably wouldn't read it, and I'm I'm glad I did. This may disappoint some of our listeners, but I'm in the same camp with a lot of what's been said here. Um. <clears throat> um I went into this, and I don't know if it's because of just the show that I'm starting to think this way or that I'm starting to realize that I can't judge a book by something I previously read. Or I shouldn't. Let me say that. I shouldn't judge something from, you know, you can't compare this to Animal Man and you can't compare it to, you know, Thunderbolts and all that other stuff. You have to take it for what it is. And and I, when I read it that way, I appreciated it and enjoyed it much more than if I would have went, okay, this is just a Spider-Man type character. Let's see what they do. They're just, you know, it's kind of forcing us to accept this thing, you know. And then, so I said, no, let me just forget that and read it. And I did. I did enjoy the read. Same thing like you guys said. I'm not going to rush out and buy the next. I doubt I would ever buy the issues for this. That's just me, you know. Um, because I, uh, what I got out of these six issues is pretty much, I think, all I need with that character. Like, it, there's some characters you want to follow and 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 you latch on to something. Um, this one, you know, I said, okay, those are six issues. That's I, that's all I need. I really don't need any more. 
Um, but I did enjoy it. Um, I think as a, if I, if this would have come out like when I was young in the 80s and I would have picked it up, I probably would have really liked it because you have, your preconceived notions are not there when you're that young. You know, I read everything then. And I don't, I'm not even sure I can say I enjoyed everything because I just, it was, I just felt like I, I wanted to read. And if that aspect works with like a young, like Jamie was saying, you know, like the younger crowd and they want to read this or a parent gives it, passes it on to a child, if that sense of wonder that, that is in this book, um, I think the way Fiona Avery writes it, there is a sense of, of you know, mystery and wonder. And although we see the Buffy connection, who's to say an 8-year-old or 10-year-old is going to see that, you know? See, I didn't see that because I never watched Buffy. So you never so watched Buffy, so I right. Never, so you're I not never even had that even to put into it. So. Right. So, I mean, so that, and I, I also what Jamie said and Kevin said, you know, I, I, I don't mind that they're doing the whole web core thing in this. I do mind it when they do it in Amazing Spider-Man. But, because there's so much history to that, you know, I mean, that's a hard thing to butt against, you know, to, to go against that continuity. That's kind of tough. But like Brian said, there's no continuity here in, in this world. Um, so I did. I, I could not find anything that I went, oh, okay, that's it. And, you know, I, I just couldn't. It's, it's, it's not the best thing in the world either. I mean, I'm not saying that. But for what it is, for what, for what it's aimed at, that's exactly what should be. You, you know what it is? It's a comic book. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a true to the spirit, just fun, entertaining, superhero comic book. Right. It's not dumbed down for kids. Right. Right. And it's not overly, you know... Dramatic for... for yeah, right. that, that kids won't enjoy it. It's like it hits the perfect... You know, it, it straddles that line very well, and it's balanced right. that way. I mean, I've seen movies that are m more shallow than this. You know right. what I mean? Like, Absolutely. If you think about... She's getting into that web core thing, and then there's the tech guy, and then there's the jealous girl, and then there's the older uh, head of the whole thing. You know, these are very cardboard characters that play in certain movies all the time. Look at any, I don't know, like Aliens or something, where they, where they always have like a crew, and each one has their specific uh, role. expertise role. Right. You know, and that's very evident in here, but I didn't, it didn't stand out as much I mean it was there but I mean I didn't mind it as much I guess I should say I mean there's movies don't sometimes don't even get this deep you know so if we accept it for something like that then you should be able to accept it I think a little more with this um, I also got a Blue Beetle vibe from her I mean not only because of this the drawing and the thing she throws but just that it's this crazy not crazy character but uh, I don't know the the mysticism the scarab the spider you know there's a lot there's some things in there you know well, that I didn't get I didn't I yeah. just didn't even consider yeah. that I mean I picked on that a little bit too um, I guess you know maybe maybe it's uh, I I don't I, I I would think that perhaps they they discussed this when creating this character but the fact that you know she's female young and a Latina you know enables some cultural diversity and, and perhaps taps into a market. Now maybe they say, hey, we, we want more you know Hispanic children to read comic books, and so let's make a Latina hero. I don't know if that's intentional, if it's marketing purposes. But in the Marvel Universe, there are not an abundance of, of uh, Hispanic characters. characters you know? So it's, an, it's, it's another thing that makes it uh, you know, an interesting concept to, to broaden comic readership. Hey, no. She's no vibe. Yeah, <laughs> and, it, and it also allots for, like the other character, Miguel. You know that if they if they wanted to, they could focus on that character too, which is a male character. He's older, you know. So you, there gives you some diversity as far as what you can do with what they've set up. It doesn't have to be all around her. So there, who knows? You yeah, know. I'm very intrigued by the whole web core thing. Um, I, I kind of agree with what you just said, Peter. Where. Uh, um, it, it, it's, it can be a little tough to swallow in, a, in the pages of Amazing Spider-Man. Although I liked the concept, I just thought it didn't go anywhere. I thought it was a big letdown. Um, but um, in this book, you know, I, I, I want to know more about WebCore. I want to know how it fits into the Marvel Universe. I want to know all that stuff. Um, because I think if it's written correctly, it, it could be a very interesting concept. And it doesn't have to detract from Spider-Man. Right. It, it, could, it could possibly enhance it. And I think it just will take a good writer... To, to weave those threads and uh, but if you found out more about webcore would it help or hurt if they 
had that show up throughout the rest of the Marvel Universe. Well, like I said, I just think it depends on how they write it. You know, I mean, look at uh, look at how lame Hydra used to be, and look at how cool Hydra has been now with the in the in Amazing Spider-Man, in the Wolverine, and, and like you know, suddenly Hydra is like all really cool. And you know, any of these organizations, whether they're good or bad, I mean, Shield is like everywhere. Shield is the glue that holds the Marvel Universe together currently. Almost too much for me. Well, almost, but I mean, it's they they're doing some really cool things with Shield. Again, maybe Webcore will someday step up to the plate and become a, a major player in the Marvel Universe, and it could be really cool, and there could be some gigantic crossover that they you know are involved in, and it could be interesting. You know, in the Spider-Man books, for me, it was always it was always the hint that there's a possibility, but there's also a very strong possibility that there is nothing to it. Exactly. All the all the origin stuff that Straczynski put in into that, um, and I understood that as he was writing it. It wasn't one of those and went. Oh, they just put a mystical thing on Spider-Man. I'm never reading it again. I gotta no. swallow this. There's no choice. No, it's not. It, it all was for me for what I read, and I haven't read the other yet or anything like that. But I was going to say they 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 pretty much take a sledgehammer and nail that right <laughs> down to the ground. So. But who's to say in a couple months what that what's going to happen to that? You know. So I mean, the the stuff that I've read, like I said, I haven't read the other. It's 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 very smoky. But in this, I do. That is what's going to last. That that is what an important part to Aranya, I think. You know, you can't have ambiguity about the web core and her place in it, because that's, that's the whole it's essence of what, she, yeah, of what she is. Um, so, I don't mind it here. And, and if they want to throw knots to Spider-Man and it never goes in Amazing Spider-Man, that's fine with me. I, I, I could accept that. Um, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> now I have a question. Um, maybe I just didn't. It was implied, and I didn't understand it, but she's the only hunter now, so the whole corporation is just for her? For her, right? That's how I took it. Okay. Well, I always thought there was only ever one hunter and one mystic. I thought that was right, yeah. the yeah, whole yeah, thing. Yeah. There can be only one. Right. And see, I, and, and I don't know, maybe I read it too quickly or you know, missed a detail because that wouldn't be uncommon. But the people that they're hunting... We don't really know who they are or why they're hunting them. And we don't even know that they're the good guys. The web core could be the bad guys. I mean, just because they're hunting somebody doesn't mean that, that you know, they're the good granted, guys. Yeah. So I was very intrigued. Like that's why I want to know more. I want to find out. Okay, who are these supposed bad guys? What what's their story? Because they didn't even touch on them. And are they really bad, or are maybe they the good guys? I want to know. So that you know, because Ezekiel seemed like he was a good guy, but there were a lot of things that he could have made him a bad guy, and that's why knowing that, reading this, made me think, hmm, I, is she getting herself into something? She's acting like a hero, but maybe she's not. Maybe they're fooling her, and she's doing the, the dirty work. I, I want to, I want to, that's why I want to know more. I always got that feeling when I was reading Is Eagle and Amazing Spider-Man. I always, like, I don't trust what he's doing. You exactly. Know, he, he could just as easily be the manipulator as well as his friend, so. Mm-hmm. When, and the end of his story proved that. You couldn't trust him. No. So um, I, oh, I had ahead. a question with Jamie with with you saying about trust. I thought of that too with the father trusting her, but then I thought, well, here he's supposedly trusting her after she just lied to him and signed the papers herself. And it might sound like a trivial thing, but it kind of was like a like a brick wall for me as far as their relationship goes. Because if he's going to trust her, wouldn't he get angry at her, more angry at her that she just went ahead and signed these papers without him even reading any of it or figuring it out? I mean, I know my parents would have been, and I just kind of. Again, that stupid parent thing. I would have felt, I felt the same way about this. He should have been more angry about it. I don't know that I would have let her go like that. It, that part did seem just too convenient. But it, I know that's just a minor point. But it just sticks in my head about that. It was the only thing that just felt off kilter to me. It didn't, it didn't flow naturally like everything else did in the story. And and I think the reason why, um, whether you're a parent or not, in this day and age, with the age of the computer and and you know all the all the opportunities that you know, I often say raising a daughter. I can't do, have her do the things that I did when I was a kid. I mean, you know, I used to come home from school, throw on my clothes, and, hey, I'm going to ride bike. That was it, you know, and come home three hours later. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't do that nowadays. That's right. So, you know, so there's a lot more uh, 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 traps that, you know, are out there for, for kids nowadays. So it's not the same world that we knew growing up. Um, so to have that kind of a lackluster point at that time, because the rest of the time he totally was fine. Yeah. You know, it was just that one point that stood out that I kind of thought was off character for him. Um, that especially being an investigative reporter, that he would want to check into this and not just like, yeah, go ahead. Um, 
But in the same token, along those lines, that's why I really enjoyed the way she was written, because she is a smart kid. Her taking the initiative to find everything out and really dig into the company and know all the things that most people even looked at the company wouldn't know. And even through the, you know, the guy running it off, you know, off track, he didn't know how to even respond to her because, you know, she played her cards right. And I thought that was a good way to write this as a, for something that could, you know, is kind of steered and, and focused for a younger audience. And and just as well as for, for, for girls, I think, you know, guys can enjoy it as well. I don't want to focus it just on that, but... I, and, I, I agree. I think it's totally something that, that a, especially a young woman would be able to read and, and really get into. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a just relatable character for, for a yeah. younger audience, and I think that's very yeah. important. Um, I'm reading way too much into it, but I know the year that I lived in New York, I was very amazed at school kids that uh, what they were allowed to do or where I saw them at all times. And, and I mean, even, you know, late at night, or not late at night, but like 7, 8, where you think, you know, as a kid I would normally be home, but... Um, and I, I'm not saying that that's what Fiona Avery was shooting for or whatever, but growing up in New York is very different than growing up in some other places. That's even what I was thinking, too. Yeah, so I mean, so some of that, I guess, didn't really stick out to me. But like I said, I, that's probably not even what they went for. But right. that, and that's a whole other topic. Right. But I just, I just made mention of that because that's something that stuck yeah, out to me. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it's not that I, that's not yeah. that destroyed the story for no, me no, or absolutely. didn't make me enjoy the book. It's just it, something that stuck out. And again, when Jamie said it, it just, again, it just stuck in my head. It, it's not anything that ruined... The rest of the book, it just eh. We got uh, an audio comment from Sean Whalen. Hey everybody, Sean Whalen here, Dr. Norge on the forum with a look at Aranya, Heart of the Spider. Okay, I walked into this book prepared to really dislike it. I was thinking to myself, oh great, another Spider-Man clone. We've seen some good attempts at this and some bad attempts at this. Is it really necessary to try again? Hell yeah, if it leads to a $5 digest that was an entertaining and accessible distraction. Some of the strong points for me were that Fiona Avery did a nice job bringing in the humor of Spider-Man that I think sometimes gets misplaced or forgotten in the book. I like the fact that she didn't do the overused family member death as a character motivation. Don't get me wrong, I think this is done very well in a number of books, but I like the fact that Miguel saving her life seemed to bring out the hero in her, and also that really she's kind of doing it just because it's kind of cool, which is rather refreshing. It brings me back to leaping off my stairs and pretending to be Superman or Batman as a kid. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, I love the moment when she tries on the costumes, gets on the Wonder Woman suit, and points out that she, I'm only 15. It's great that comics can poke fun at themselves. I love Wonder Woman's outfit, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of funny that a 15-year-old's going to point out that it's kind of impractical, so it's, I enjoy that. I also loved her banter during the verbal tennis match between Dad and Miguel. It kind of broke up the scene and, again, kind of gave me that attachment to what I liked about Spider-Man. Also, her joking around during the final battle in Issue 6 was very reminiscent of the best Spider-Man battles. The exoskeleton idea was kind of interesting. I'm curious to see where we're going to go with that. She also had that excited enthusiasm with her damage dealers during the final few panels, and I'm curious to see how they're going to be used. Was Ezekiel mentioned in Issue 3 the same one from Spidey? If so, I love when they throw in little Easter eggs like that. It reminds me that this is part of the same universe, so I'm hoping that's kind of what they were going for there. I had a few issues with this book. They're kind of nitpicky things. As far as the dad's concerned, oh yeah, he's going to let her go off on a weekend like that at <laughs> age 15 with so little information. That brings me to actually one of the weakest parts of the book for me, the first few issues I just had trouble getting into because I just couldn't get into the supporting cast. Loved Miguel, but the father and the high school friend Lynn just kind of seemed kind of flat for me. Didn't give me any attachment yet. I'm actually hoping that, you know, if I pick up the next digest, that they'll do something to kind of flesh out these characters. Because supporting cast to me are, are the type of characters that kind of flesh out the main character for me. And they're the ones that make me kind of love the main character. So I'm, I'm hoping that these characters get uh, fleshed out. I did like the web core guys. I liked Miguel. I liked Ted. I liked Nina. They made for some great moments with Aranya and actually kind of you know, gave you some insight into her mind. So on that end of it, they did a really nice job. I'd just like to see more on the, the family and friends end because you know, obviously they're kind of playing off that she's got two lives going on, and I'd like to see where they go with that. This book kind of reminds me of DC's Batgirl in the art style. 
and it's kind of a whole overall presentation. That's a good thing for me because I've been enjoying the look of that book, and I do think that Americanized anime hybrid style is fitting for this book and can appeal to an audience that were fans of the current Teen Titans cartoon. Good move. Does it have the depth of Watchmen? No, but it's not really supposed to. It's just an interesting attempt at bringing in a younger audience while putting some great ideas and twists on an already great concept. It has its flaws, but it delivered enough that I could see myself checking out the next digest. I'm curious to hear how people felt about picking this up monthly, as I didn't really get drawn in, like I said, until about issue three, mainly because of the supporting character issues I mentioned. Anyways, thanks for picking this one out. I appreciate the cheaper book of the month, and I'm curious to hear what other people thought about this one. He pretty much summed up everything we said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just, I just want to jump back into the, the whole father thing. See, the reason it didn't bother me, and I'm not saying that I, I don't appreciate everything you're saying, is because it came to me, his character came to me as the overworked father who is trying to do the best he can now that his wife has passed away and he trusts his daughter enough to know that she's not going to be really, I mean, yeah, he throws it, that would throw a red flag up and, you know, maybe he would, maybe in the next ones we find out he's doing more investigating into the background of this company or whatever. But it was just one of those that, you know, he's the overworked father who trusts his daughter and just, you know, rather than fight her and tell her, no, she can't go, he's just going to put enough faith in her that, you know, he, she's doing the right thing. All, the, all along, then, you know, coming, then he wants to meet this person, he needs to, and that's, I thought they addressed in the next couple episodes, you know, in the next issue where it came up. So that's why it didn't really bother me. I mean, you've seen that character in numerous television shows, numerous movies, and it just didn't, you know, really... Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of was like, yeah, okay, but it didn't really ring that false to me that, that this character wouldn't do something like that. One of the things that he said, um, you know, that it's not it's not meant to be Watchmen, and, and I think that... Um, if you didn't, en- if someone didn't enjoy this book, which is perf- perfectly valid, right. uh, it's just not d- fine. Then you know, then this is something that you know you wouldn't seek out, you wouldn't drop. I mean, that you would drop. That you go find. You know, I'm sure there's plenty of other titles that you do like. Um, you have to go in it not wanting to find Watchmen in it. You have to go right. in knowing. Well, it's that's the just thing. I mean, face value and I think stuff. that's something we've learned through all this, as well as not just book of the month, but through other things, is that going in and, and accepting things, you know, being open to what's out there. Not trying to pin, pigeonhole everything and that everything has to be this complex and everything has to be so uh, thought through that there are there is room for books like this that, um, yeah, okay, it's kind of geared more for kids, but if, if, uh, if older people want to read this and they enjoy it, they can. It's not something that has to be so complex and, and uh, you know, it's, I think going into it with, like when you said, you know, I, like, I got to get myself out of that mode you know, and I did the same thing because I started to read it, and I was like, I'm, you know, I'm, I got to force myself to open this book. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I can't do that. I got to go into it and go give it a chance, give it a chance to present itself, and and see what it does. And I did, and I'm glad I did because it it it, it produced what I feel it was going to produce. So I was I was reading message boards other than our own about this, just trying to get a feel of what people thought of it back when it came out, and um, it seemed the biggest hurdle was the comparison to Marvel's Spider-Girl title. Um, they felt uh, like that this was cheating them out of that, or, or, or it was trying to steal some of its audience from Spider-Girl to this. Mm. They felt that, um, uh, that Marvel wasn't supporting Spider-Girl, Spider-Girl and putting too much emphasis on Aranya as a way to... I don't know, you know, maybe some people said, you know, it was a way, because it was in the spotlight and because it was getting media attention and, you know, it won an award from the Mayor's Office of New York and Women of the Year, Lat- Latina w- w- Magazine or, uh, um, made Aranya the, the Woman of the Year and things like that. <coughs> they thought they were short-shrifting Spider-Girl. And, um, and the more I read those comments, uh, the more I realized that, okay, that's exactly what we're tr- what I'm trying not to do is don't go in with comparisons already in your mind because you're, you're already going in hating it. So, of course you're not going to like it. You know. Um, I was just, I was going to read some stuff from the forum. Sure. Uh, and, and, and the forum was, was really mixed on, on this. Um, 
Here's one from uh, Webhead. Uh, Aranya has been a solid book from the beginning. Nothing really jumps out at you, but also I never regretted buying a single issue. Um, just going to read some short ones, and then I'll go into some long ones. They might stir up some some uh, discussion. R. Johnson two 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 said, "I read it. Thought it was pretty rubbish, to be honest. Easily the worst book of the month." Um, Expresso Dom said, "Oh hell no." That's it. That is the end of the first trade. That was six issues of comics. I may actually take this book back to Borders. Nothing happened. I only know Miguel, Anya, and Ted. Nothing else stands out. Let me calm down before I break down likes and dis- dislikes. Was I alone in missing the point of this book? Um, so here's one from Sandman 300. Just finished Aranya. I like the read. At five bucks, what's the bitch about? What I like the most about this book is Mark Brooks' art. i never been exposed to his work before and was really impressed with his detail in every panel. The colorist team did a nice job, but sometimes seemed too dark and took away from the story, which we said could be the publishing. publishing yeah. I like the story, but have seen it many times before in one way or another. I was relieved that this wasn't some Spider-Man ripoff, but it was more like a Japanese anime. I think I'll pick up the next digest. I really would like to know what happens now. The best thing about this book of the month is the digest format, which I fell in love with. It's a really nice size, and the price is unbelievable. I got six issues of a nice quality book for under five bucks. Come on, Marvel, let's see more. There are so many books I would give a try if they released lesser-known series in this format. Um, This is from Rick Croxton. I have read the Aranya Digest, and while it isn't something I would have picked myself, I will say I am glad I read it. I can see where people will see the Buffy reference to her, but it works for the character. After reading her introduction, I'm curious to see how she handles being in the Marvel Universe with all the superheroes and villains. If Marvel puts her series into digests, I'll pick them up to see where the series goes from here. This was an excellent choice for a Book of the Month Club and a fun way to get back into Marvel Comics reading. Thanks, geeks. And later on he says, Older readers like myself, 45, Find it harder to try new styles of art, but with Aranya and Sentinel, I find that the art style is perfect for the story. I wouldn't care for it on a Batman comic, but it works for this series. The first series made me interested enough to try more of Aranya, and it led me to try Sentinel. So if an old guy like me can try and like something completely new, then there is hope for the future of comics. Uh, And I'll start getting into some that really had a different opinion. Green Skeleton said... I did not like Aranya at all. I am so sick of the whole chosen one mage pseudo-cult Matrix Star Wars stuff. It gets so heavy that the humor and fun get sucked right out. And the high school teen speak dialogue is awful. The art wasn't even that good. Did you, see this? did you see the size of her dad? I'd read a book about him. An investigative reporter the size of the Hulk with a mustache that could groom a ski hill. Sign me up. <laughs> um, this is from Master Ultan. Two words, ultimate spider buffy. It's actually three words. Um, sorry. <laughs> Unless spider buffy's hyphenated. It is hyphenated, okay. I guess. Uh, a few more. The art is rather nice. I think it's the book's strongest feature. It bears a strong resemblance to Mark Bagley's ultimate Spider-Man art, right down to the disproportionate head when she's in costume, quote-unquote. Although Mark, Mark Brooks and Roger Cruz seem to realize that different human beings typically have distinguish, distinguishable faces, something of which I'm not sure Bagley is always aware the writer is mostly solid, but nothing special. Avery gets at least one demerit for having a character explain things to the audience, which every character in the scene should darn well know. Boys, a sanctuary means... I hate it when authors do that. The characters in setup draw a great deal from Buffy, which isn't bad, loves me some Buffy, but they don't seem to add anything to that dynamic here. Nor do they include or draw on those elements which made Buffy truly great, the witty dialogue, the metaphors of adolescence. I've read people mention how it is good that this is a Latina superhero. I'm all for such efforts, but Aranya's ethnicity doesn't really appear as part of her character, other than to supply names and faces. That's fine with me. I don't think it's impacted the story. However, if the idea was to create a character with a, with a particular ethnicity, which I'm assuming, I would think that ethnicity should be important or integral to the story. I won't be rushing out to get any more of this series, but I enjoyed it. What about that last part where you were talking about that? Well, I, was, I had some comments on that. And the, the aspect of her ethnicity that I think is clearly evident is that she's feisty. And, you know, she's not afraid to go into that office with the board members and say, uh, what are we doing here? Well, I'm asking you the questions. I mean, and, Peter, I think you can attest to the fact that 
Uh, you know, I don't know if you want to call it a stereotype, but there are a lot of Latina women who are feisty. And, I, I, you know, that's been my experience with many of them I know. That's not to say that they're not nice people. It's just saying that, you know, they call a spade a spade, and uh, they tell it right to your face. And uh, I think that's her character to a T in here. And uh, and it's only been six issues, and they could certainly tap into her ethnicity later on at some point and go in any number of directions. What, what do you think, Peter? I mean, you're the you're the... Hispanic in the room. The resident Jesus. Latino. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me of all people. Um, I know it's more Spanish than him. Yeah. <laughs> Growing up with, with a single mother and, and with three, three sisters plus two more sisters on my dad's side, um, yeah, I mean, there's, you know, that, that's a generalized statement and you, sure. you acknowledge and, right. that. Um, but I, I could see that in her character. Does it, does it mean that, that she couldn't be white or, or black or no. Asian. No, 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 it doesn't. But I think um, I think it certainly allows itself to some of that storytelling. I don't. Lends it to it. It's not yeah. necessary. Yeah, I don't think. Um, uh, it's funny they did make a big deal about her being the the Marvel's first Latina superhero who has a um, solo series, but I don't think that's. I think that's as far as you can really get with this character. I mean, uh, unless they. Unless, you know, I, I don't know how it w- would relate to the story and to this story. I mean, I don't know if it even should, you know? I mean, well, it's, it, other than just being who she is. Well, the thing is, if that's that's the question you have to ask yourself. If you read this and it did it stand out to you that it was being forced on you, that it was forced that this character was Latino, right. and if you didn't get that feeling, then it's irrelevant. You know, the character is who she is, and whatever came about came about. Right. It doesn't matter what ethnicity it was. And I Whether think that's, that's a good their, thing. That's exactly right, and that's the way it should be done um, because it could be anybody. It could be any teenage girl who went through this. It just happens to be her. Whether or not that their initial intention was to make a Latino superhero, or especially a female or something, to appeal to you know, what the times that, that they are as now, so what? I mean, it, it never came across to me that this was being forced on me. Right. If it hit and it worked and... I think it was it was uh, even. It wasn't something that was off kilter. No, I, I I agree. It totally had no no sway one way or the other. It didn't take away anything, and, and it it was just that's who she was. Being in New York, that's what they chose. I didn't think it it affected the story at all. And and if they dip into that ethnicity later, fine. But it I don't think it's a problem if they never do. It, it, like you said, like you all said, it could be anybody. Yeah, like I just read. Uh, Waiting out in the car before we came in here, I read Defenders uh, 17, I think it is, from Bill Hughes at episode uh, 100. He gave us all these books. 1974 Defenders with an appearance of Power Man, the first time they met Luke Cage. You know, if this was written in 1974, oh, God, it would be so shoved in our faces that she was a Hispanic. A-S-A. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and I think there are some limitations in comics. Like, you know, in a, in a household... The, from my experience, if if an older if the older generation speaks knows English but speaks Spanish, it's usually the older generation speaking Spanish, the younger generation understanding them but speaking English. Now, could you do that in this? You know, you'd have to have those little parentheses to, so that the dad and and that's that you know it it really if you're not listening to it, it really why, just make them all speak English. You know, I, sometimes I go, you know, where where he calls where he says something to her in Spanish, but it's just at the end of the sentence. And that, like that they do. I mean. When I lived uh, in Mexico and when I lived with a Mexican family, they would do that all the time, speak an entire sentence in English, but uh, call me mijo, you know, right. which is my son. And so that I, that t- played totally fine to me, not right. a stretch at all, you yeah. know, and calling her mi añarita, you know, that's that's what he would call her. Yeah. I mean, some of that, I, I you know, I, I tend to gloss over some of that, like, some, uh, and, and I, I make it that it's, in my mind, that's like, Sean Cassidy, uh, Banshee going, you know, da 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 boy, boyo, or, you know, he throws yeah. on his ethnicity at the end. Like, it's like a, for me, it's sometimes it feels like a constant reminder as opposed to, even though I know it, it is natural, it, when you're reading something like that, it's some, for me, it's sometimes harder to, dis- I always go, you know, it's like Luke Cage, you know, da 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 baby, da 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 you know, or... Sweet Christmas. Yeah, or vibe, you know, da 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 essay, or whatever he used to say in the old JLA. It's like a. It's just a, a a reminder. It seems more than anything, but it doesn't. I, I didn't hate it. You know? No, because I think doing it the other way would be a distraction. Yeah, it'd be harder to read, and it would tend itself make it. You know, it would take it make a drag for you. It would be a speed bump for you as a reader going through that. Yeah. So by doing it the way they do it, it brings it a po- it brings it upon itself as you read it. But it's not over the fact that you got to force yourself to work through the dialogue 
Well, and just just like any movie, like take Hunt for Red October. They're supposed to speak Russian. What do they do in the beginning of that scene? They tighten yeah. up on the guy's lips, and all of a sudden he's speaking English. And they don't ever try to speak Russian again. Right. You just accept the fact that they're doing it so you can understand it. It's the same thing here. You, I would, it would just take away from it if they tried to do any more with it. Or, or I think it would even distract if they put those quotes around because there's no need to do it. You just right. take well, it and at I, face and value. And I just accept it for the fact that her father is the second generation, yeah. you right. know, uh, so he already speaks full English, and he's an investigative reporter, so he kind of has to speak very good English to do his job better so that he can communicate with everyone in the newspaper, which is all English-speaking. Right. So that just makes sense that, that he that, – you know, I mean. Now, uh, now, here's something that would be interesting that I, that I think would be an interesting experiment. If, say, there was she had a grandmother or something like that, that they would totally write her dialogue in Spanish, with no translations, but that you would get what she's saying by what Aranya. That to me would then go okay. They really are making it a point that she is Latina in a good way. Like I would see that in a good way because it it almost makes you go. Uh, either, either you know, one you got to try to translate it. Just think of the whole Superman issues where they where they write it in Kryptonese. Yeah. You know, it's um, and it also it, it it's a storytelling thing where you know you're seeing the generational gap. You're seeing the differences between older and younger uh, family members. Well, just take our friend Alex. How many times does his mom and dad talk Greek to him, and he understands it and talks back in a little Greek, but mostly English. But but there's that whole gap there where he doesn't speak it fluently like they do, but right. that's how they talk to him, and he gets it. The only yeah. trap for doing that and writing a comic, though, is you have to make sure that her replies oh, yeah. are specific enough that you understand what's going on. You can't be lazy in that, exactly. in that right? But I, but I think if – and this is just my mind because obviously they're not going this way. But right. if something like I, – I would – I would res- – not respect. I would um, – I don't know what the word is, but I would accept her ethnicity that that it was really something that ha- that she was. You appreciate it. Yes, yeah. That that they went out of their way to make a Latina character because they're going to do this and they're going to show you. Sometimes this is what it's like. That yeah, right. you're right. I would I would appreciate it much more. But like you said, as or you know, it's no point to the story, and that's good. You know, right. So we we did. It should be. It should. It should be. I don't. Is colorblind the white the right way to phrase it? That it should be just. You shouldn't pay attention to that. It should it's, be yeah. out of your head. I mean, it's an intentional thing they did with the character, but it's not something you have to have to, for the character for you to focus on right. to enjoy the character. So I mean, that's that's playing it the correct way. You're not trying to specifically, you know, we got to make a Latino book now, you know, and but it's it's something they chose to do, and there's a market for it, but they didn't do it to be a forced thing to do. As we, far as um, oh. I, I wanted to ask a question the, sure. for all the ones that have, you know, that are Buffy fans, which you know, like I said, I, I am not aware because I never watched it. But in the setup for this character, you know, some people had mentioned on the forums in that when uh, for this character, it's they want more they want more setup, they want more background on the supporting cast, they want more uh, the dialogue to be a certain way, they want more development of the character. With Buffy was. I mean, I'm and I'm, I'm just trying to put this in relation. Like, this is six issues you read here. I'm sure in six six episodes of Buffy, you didn't get all of that in there either. So, oh no, those first six episodes of Buffy were a little rough. Right. So, I mean, taking that into context, you know, for for what some of those comments were saying, like, you got to take that into the same context. You got to look at it that way because who knows? In the next two digests, they could really get into the whole Web Corp thing, and you'll get a lot more background in the supporting character, which will then fill out and flush out, but. You know, you got to take into consideration. This is six issues. It's an origin story. It's a setup of a character, setup of her universe, so to speak, in the Marvel universe. I guess the the counter argument argument to that would be though that this is six monthly, whereas six episodes was six weeks. So I mean, if you're looking at time, like how much time you invest in a six issue run of a comic as opposed to a six month uh, TV thing, maybe, and, and, and I, money. that's just being devil's advocate. You know? Even money as as TV just comes across the airways. I mean, of course, you, you, you pay for it with, with whatever you buy in product, but you're not investing anything monetarily in a TV show like that. It's just time. But you're right. I mean, if you think of story content, yeah, right. yeah, yeah you're getting much more out of this. I have another email. Uh, this one's from Evan Cantrell. Hey, guys, I thought that I would chime in on this month's selection. From what I had read and heard, I wasn't all that interested in giving this book a try. 
However, seeing that it was one of Marvy's nifty little digests and it wasn't that much of a monetary commitment, I decided to give it a go. I think these digests are a great idea, but I wish they could work out some of the printing problems as the colors seem to come out a little too dark. Anyways, on to some of my quick thoughts on the book. I thought that Mark Brooks and Roger Cruz's art on the title was pretty decent. I love Brooks' design for Aranya's costume, the way it is featured on the cover. Too bad you don't really see it that much in the book itself. Unfortunately, the full costume seen later on is horrendous. It looks like a bad Power Rangers costume. <laughs> As for the story itself, Fiona Avery didn't do a very good job of hooking me. I like how things are tied into the stuff Straczynski was doing over in Amazing Spider-Man with Ezekiel and the totem powers, but if you hadn't read those issues, why would you care? The whole purpose and motivation of WebCore and the people they were fighting against could have been explained a little better. Another thing that bothered me was that Aranya and Miguel's powers were never clearly defined. Did anyone else get what the point was of having the whole hunter healing thing? I'm glad I gave this book a try, but I can say that I'm not all that interested in reading any more about the character. And I, you know, th speaking of the costume, I, I have to, you know, when I was saying earlier about how I see a lot of elements from other characters in this book, when I first saw her change with the powers and it started, you know, coming up around, I'm thinking Witchblade right away. You know, then after I saw when she had the full thing on, I'm, I looked at it and go, well, Christ, it looks like the Giver, you know, or, or you know, a full, right. you know what I mean? So there's a lot of elements like that. And well, I, Mark Brooks is, I, I, from talking to him at the show, I, he's Baltimore. very into the uh, anime and And, 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 and so, so is Fiona Avery. Fiona Avery, yeah, because oh, yeah. she was with, you know, Witchblade and stuff like that. So, yeah. Right. Was, and if you look at her website, uh, FionaAvery.com, she's very into a lot of the, the I don't even know what the label. Is. I mean, but she's constant. She, just go to her website and you'll see she's she's coming from a very well informed background when she is looking at or writing this kind of stuff. So, and that's the only thing. I mean, for me, I didn't really care for that. You know, I kind of liked it without that element. But in a way, I can see why they did it because to me, it's almost like instead of looking at it as a Spider-Man ripoff who just right, has something. powers, you have something different to it. So right. it's relevant. And it, you're target audience loves that stuff exactly it's extremely popular right now well that's one of the paul siebert on the forum said on an interesting side note i've noticed anya's powered up form is apparently visually inspired by japanese superheroes such as Kamen rider kikata and various sentai sentai power ranger teams considering the new blue beetle also seems to have a Kamen rider-esque design i wonder if we're going to be seeing more tokusatsu influenced superheroes. The fact that this book was loosely tied into the Spider-Man franchise on, um, is ironic as Toei's Spider-Man was somewhat influential in Japanese superhero genre. And he has a lot of links that, you know, yeah. that explain a lot of these uh, terms and things like that. But I think that's very true. Look what's on, All you got to do is turn on the cartoons and that's right. turn on Saturday morning. You bet. Well, and I have to go back and read that, that whole Aranya thread because I stayed away from it just until after we did this purposely. So now I, I want to yeah, go back I didn't, and read all I didn't stuff. read any of it because I didn't want it to influence anything I said. That's right. why I'm bringing it to you. There you go. Thank you, Peter. Um, I have a few more. These are a little more on the negative side, um, uh, just because it might stir up debate. One issue I had with this is the whole, I know more about you than you do, hence I will instruct you, plot device that has been used a hundred times already and probably even in these character launching stories Marvel keeps putting out. I mean, there is always someone that knows more about the character's destiny than them, and that device seems a little tired to me now. All in all, I didn't enjoy it much, and I stopped buying Amazing Fantasy after the story arc. Comics are so good nowadays that new concepts need to be very strong to hold on, and this character just wasn't strong enough in my opinion, as from Parallax. That's kind of what Shane was talking about before. Um, Wet Rats says, Well, I wanted to like it, but, it was, but I was pretty unimpressed. Um, when Fiona Avery did a couple of fill-in issues of Amazing Spider-Man a couple of years back, I got the impression that she wasn't really a comic book reader. She just, just, just doesn't seem to understand the rhythm of comic book storytelling. There have been several points where I turned a page and had to double-check to see I hadn't turned to accidentally. And the dialogue is clunky. There's way too much in many of the panels to the point that it crowds the art and keeps the story from flowing properly. Uh, the coloring doesn't help. Already fairly dark, some pages get borderline unreadable when they get scrunched down to digest size and printed on cheaper paper. And then there's the word balloons. A lot of the time, they're pointing at the wrong character. That's just sloppy. The art is just okay, certainly nothing innovative. 
When, the, when this manga-esque style was fresh and innovative, I liked it. Now that seems to have become the official look for, the, for books designed to, att- to attract teens, it's getting pretty tired. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the art- artist's actual style, but rather the style chosen by marketing forces. And then there's the story. Aside from the obvious Buffy influences, there's a particular annoying introduction of new mysterious organizations that are supposed to have existed for centuries. Excuse me, this is the Marvel Universe. We already got 40-some-odd years' worth of secret criminal, mystical, what-have-you societies to play with. Why not use one of them? I'm not mad at the geeks for picking this. I've been curious about it anyway, but I'm very disappointed in Marvel's editorial staff for allowing this book to be done in such a half-assed manner. Woo! But half ass to who? I mean, you know, for a teen, this is perfect. You know, but for somebody with forty years of continuity, and that's my, you know, that's what I, that's why when I read this, I just put myself in a, in a completely younger state of mind. If I was fourteen, I would have eaten this up. It would have been perfect for me. And I, they, there has to be books. There have to be books that are perfect for Jamie and I are there at the forty year old one. We liked it. I, I I mean, I, you know, you said you enjoyed it, and so did I. And I didn't have to force myself to put myself in a mentality I could just read it and enjoy it yeah but uh, truthfully I don't know at 14 if I would have because again a a female character I don't mind female characters now I mean I I always but at 14 I don't know if I would have appreciated a female character as much you know as as I do now yeah I would have because I would have been an amethyst I was going to say you and your amethyst yeah but and uh, Jen (laughs) Jen (laughs) <laughs> Didn't you, weren't you talking about Jem or something? Yeah, but he was a Martian. I mean, yeah, a Satan. No, 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 there's that, that Jem, that cartoon. There's the Rockers. Oh, watch God. that. Oh, yeah. I thought I ta- heard you talking I about know, that. I know, that was brought up because I was making the same comment. <laughs> Irregardless. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Peter shows. And like Sorry, it was My Little Pony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and he, he's, you know, he can not like it. You know, mm-hmm. That's great. But oh, absolutely. It's, but um, it's not aimed. I, I, I just don't. It's you know like if we if we never did this podcast and I picked up Aranian or Amazing Fantasy number one and I picked it up I probably would have went uh, okay I don't need to read this anymore you know I, so I understand that but I also understand that that's my particular liking of a book I don't I'm not going to read this monthly you know doesn't mean I hate it but I'm just going to go oh that wasn't for me goodbye I don't think and, uh, I don't think there's anything in here to, to say that it's utter crap you know no like, no, no I don't either and and whenever we sit around here and listen and get listener emails and stuff about anything that we do with this it helps broaden my understanding because maybe i didn't get something and right and that that's exactly why i'm reading these because i want to see yeah. if it brings something up and that's and and, and it it helps me helps me maybe appreciate it more than maybe i would have for, for anything anything that i might not have 100 percent just loved but yeah. you know and i don't mind if people don't like it i mean it's not like we're trying to you know again the object of book of the mm-hmm. month is to get people to read things including ourselves the stuff that we might not read or you know haven't read or whatever but i think this is the most Negative comments we've gotten for, which is great because we I actually prefer right. some of that stuff. But more. to say it's utter crap and half-assed, I which think he didn't do. I mean, we're just talking. Well, he said it was half-assed. He said it was oh, he did. Oh, he did. Decision well, he said allowing this book to be done. I said, oh, okay, yeah, I guess he did. I guess <laughs> I believe that Marvel can be half-assed. That I can believe. But I mean, you know, I, I, I don't. I don't get sorry, the feeling anything that it was done half-assed. You no, know? I want to comment on on one thing that he said about um, uh, creating a new mysterious organization instead of using one of the many ones that that has been around, and I, I think. That that, you know, that can go both ways. Is sometimes you say, "Oh my God," you know, another aim story. Like, okay, everything that could possibly ever be done with aim has been done. So let's create something new because, my God, it's boring now. If every it, aim's always behind everything, or Hydra's always behind everything, you know, how can they possibly be behind every bad thing that ever happens in the entire planet? But then at the other side, you know, sometimes you say. Uh, Oh, isn't it great when somebody pulls up a really obscure character like the calculator in DC and makes him like the ultimate evil? Well, not the ultimate evil, but makes him a very important character, and that's fun too. But you know, I, so I don't see anything wrong with creating a new mysterious organization. And because, well, first of all, it wasn't new. I mean, it's been t- it's already two or three years old now because right. Straczynski already established it. So, but you know, I think if it's done again, it has to just be done well and. In six issues, you don't know yet. It was intriguing. Uh, maybe, maybe it'll, maybe it'll t- web core will turn out to be the worst idea ever in the history of comics. Uh, maybe it won't. Uh, you know, it, it goes back to that idea that you you need to to have new things every now and then to keep things fresh. I mean, yeah, how do you keep Bruce Wayne and and Spider Man the same age all these years? But you still invent new ways to do it. It makes sense. You still need new things to keep 
current with today. So to use, to always use ones that are established would get extremely stale, even more so than what they are at times. Well, when you when you mentioned the Hydra, I I act that drove me nuts. Reading them in Amazing Spider-Man, Thunderbolts, and Wolverine was it? No, was it Wolverine? Yeah, Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah. Enemy of like, State. Just because I was reading most of those, I went, holy hell, and none of it connected. That, to me, was definitely The thing is, though, that hasn't been done for a while. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you it's done I mean? everywhere. So now it's everything. Yeah, yeah. It's so, like, so try to explain it all. It does get a little yeah. Well, that's. I think that's kind of why I liked it. It was It was a lot of Hydra, but it, it, yeah. when's the last time we exactly. really saw Hydra? When, so when was true. Hydra cool, and you know, exactly. when did they made a good, you know, a cool influence? As and one of the titles villain. even made fun of the fact that they used to be a bunch of dingbats, and yeah. now all of a sudden they were badass. You know, it was like, when, when did Hydra get all serious? You know, I used to be the thing with AIM. AIM used to be the you know the one bucket that heads. everybody heads. Everybody looked at them and yeah. thought they were like the doofuses of the you know. But but well, they I'm were sh- just as formidable as Hydra or anybody else was. But I'm yeah. sure yeah. sometime along the way, until I met you guys years ago, I always when you at first when you'd start talking about AIM, I'm like, what are they talking about toothpaste for? <laughs> I totally like right over my head. But the uh, as far as the web corp goes, I mean, you got to realize they could just utilize this for this book. I mean, right. they could use this as like a low-lying, you know, sure. understory corporation, and it doesn't have to bounce over into every other Marvel Universe book. This could be just set in this story, even though it's set in current continuity, and it doesn't have to expand out further than what it is. It could be this under-the-radar kind of thing going on. Yeah, and that's what I think it would be kind of cool. If it stayed within this realm for, you know, five years or more, and then maybe at some point some writer will have a really good idea, a way to tie it in that's not forced, and then boom, it's, fine. it's in everybody's face for a little while. You know, that's... Some of the, uh, what I find interesting on some of the comments, I'll, I'm, and I just have a f- just a few more, um, like Iculus goes into this long <clears throat> thing where he critiques some of the things we critique and that some of the other people critique, but at the end he goes, all in all, I'd give the book a three out of five, which is not a horrible, you know. No. And then Jonah... That's average. He he talks pretty much about the same things, you know, about about the manga-ish style art. Um, he fe- he felt that uh, he really didn't know much more after six issues about it. But then he said, uh, maybe I'd recommend it to a preteen female in lieu of not much else being available other than manga. Still glad I read it, though. Next. Um, yeah, three out of five is above average, so. Yeah. Uh, Ping33 says, after going to seven stores, I finally fo- found a copy and read it. Um Number one, I really hate the whole Spider Society, Spider Totem, J- JMS crap. I know Fiona is his protege, which is one reason I've never read her stuff before. Two, talk about decompressed. In six issues, not much happens. Sometimes this isn't a problem, but I don't feel like we got anything done in those issues. We have no idea about the nature of the threat. I don't think the characters are particularly well drawn beyond being flat stereotypes. What we do get is a lot of will they, won't they let her in, but since the Spider Society sucks and it's, and it's basically predetermined that they'll let her in, I wonder what the point is. Uh, three, I guess taken on its own, it's not a bad book, but it's not a particularly good one. When the JMS ghetto and other factors are taken into account, you are left with something I really did, couldn't give a damn about. Uh, four, when armored up, she looks like Mantis, that old 90s TV show. <laughs> And he, but he says, that is not a good thing. <laughs> At least in the end, all it cost me was five po- uh, f- five, 550 pounds, or he's from the UK. Yeah, five, uh, five pounds. Five pound 50. Okay, thank you. And the 90 minute to read it, plus however long the CGS show is. <laughs> now I want to comment a little bit about something you went back on before, Peter, with uh, kind of taking some of the thunder away from Spider-Girl. I've, I've read some of those issues, and I really... They just seem like two completely different characters. You, you yeah. know, there might be some similarities, but when I read Spider Girl, I got more of the whole, um, just pretty much a female Peter Parker back in the the earlier Spider Man stuff. And this one just seems completely exactly. different. So to pull away from those, I, I think is kind of, I don't want to say a ridiculous notion, but it's you know, it's two different characters. It's, it's not blatantly obvious. Yeah, and it's yeah. not something that you feel is was intentional like they they didn't create this to rub out spider girl and you know to kill that book off well, that's what i'm wondering if some people take it as that and and how can you when spider girls had so many close calls over the last few right. years and now she is canceled i mean now. yeah i mean to go 100 issues is, is like yeah. yeah i think that's given her if you love that book so much but you haven't pre-ordered five copies every month to spread to four of your friends keep one for yourself yeah you love the book but you know are you willing to go that far to support it you know um this one you know at least is it's 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 that whole thing of 
where the new character is coming from, number one. But are you going to support the new stuff? I mean, it's easy to support Batman and X Men and you know get all those X titles and get all the Infinite Crisis tie-ins. You know, but are you really going to take a chance if you like it? If you don't like it, you can't fault that. But I mean, if you liked Spider Girl and know that it's going, when, when was it almost canceled? Like around the seventies or something yeah. like that. You know, and they did. They pushed it. They they got the petition up. Great. Now order five copies. Get four in the hands of your friends. Make them enjoy it. Make let them bar. Do something more. Um, there's one thing, you know, to complain. But there's also, you know, when do you start actually backing up your complaints? You know, that's that's just how I. That's and that's my whole strong pre-ordering notion thing. You know, so same thing. It's not to get in this argument, but the same. It's it's what they go back and forth with the whole monthly versus trade thing too. Right. You know, even though this is being digested, it's now canceled. So, so we know. I mean, it's Fiona Avery put on her message board that she hasn't been asked to write anymore. So that doesn't necess- maybe somebody else is picking up, but there's no. And uh, yeah, the insider was, information right. that I have uh, apparently Joe Casada has big plans for Aranya. So they while well, they right. canceled the monthly title, it, it is most certain that she will be reappearing in some fashion or other. She's going to be in Young Avengers. She's also in um, <laughs> uh, Marvel Team Up too in in, in yeah. that story. But I mean, I looked at the number of, on this, and I think one of the solo issues of Aranya was, I think it was like in the 160 somewhere in there, like on the top 300 for December, whatever the last list was. I think it was kind of that far down. So, um, yeah. I mean, I, I have every issue of Spider Girl, and it was something that I continued to read. I didn't buy it at first, but something that came on later on, I, I didn't want to try it, but then I tried it and I started enjoying it. So, being a reader of Spider Girl, I can read this, and I don't, I don't get like a repetitive feeling from reading this. I don't get something that uh, seems to be more attention put to this, or you know, I don't, I don't get any misconception between the two titles. So to me, there's two totally different characters, totally different universes. Um, yep. They can exist. It can, be, it can be that way. Yeah, Spider-Girls, the Spider-Man, I would want to read now instead of the stuff they're putting out in the Spider-Man title. <laughs> um, this is the last thing I have um, from David D. I believe that Aranya was part of the Marvel Next line, which sought to add exciting new faces to the Marvel Universe. A good objective, but I thought they cheated themselves from the beginning by creating a character that had an unsure foot stuck in the Spider-Man mythology. Tying her to Ezekiel and making her name and powers related to a spider made her seem like a new version of a character instead of a new character. Runaways and Gravity are a much better example of adding new, fresh faces to the Marvel Universe. Also, I finished the die just feeling that so little had been established in six issues. I won't compare it to the first six issues of Amazing Spider-Man, since that was a different time. But even in the first six issues of Ultimate Spider-Man, we had Peter's full origin, his relationship to MJ an established supporting cast, as well as Dr. Octopus and Green Goblin. At the end of Aranya, she finally had a costume, and I thought, right, so now to fight more of those guys in the suits. Not enough a hook to keep me around. Um, And he has a couple questions, which I think we might have answered some of these. How did the digest size affect your enjoyment? Did it matter? Uh, Other than the color it took away. Sometimes the smaller letters bothered me, but that's that's just old age and needing glasses. I have some sort of Affinity Unexplained <laughs> liking of the digest size. I thought I would hate it, and then when CrossGen started doing their things in digest, I was bitching on their forum. How can you shrink it down that small? And then I got it, and I absolutely fell in love. And I and I bought. Plus, it's cheap. I've that's I you know, and that's <laughs> part of it. Seriously, there would be so many more titles that I would read if I could pick them up six comics for eight dollars, then take away my discount, and, and I'd pay, you know, come on, five bucks for six comics. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you do you expect that there will still be an Aranya in the Marvel Universe five years from now? How about ten years? And if she is still around, will they have let her grow any older? Grow any older by then? That depends on how they handle her, what they go, what they who they get to write her, what they do with her, what the readers think of if they latch onto her. I mean, yeah, I mean that's not. with anything. I mean, if it doesn't have reader support, it's not going to last. However, yeah. uh, from what I've read, there's potential for that, you know. And that's all I, that's all you can deduce out of this. I mean, you read six issues, so I mean, right. everything's set up. I mean, you, as far as the wasps are concerned, you found out that they were trying to get their own hunter up, you know, for this year, and now you know that won't happen for another year. But in the same token, you know, there could be the same possibility that they escaped with that hunter, and that might show up later on as a villain, you know, and stuff. So it has the potential to do it. Now, you know, you, one can only speculate five, ten years down the road because you know 
who knows where the rest of the comics are going to be in five, ten years, yet alone something like this. Yeah. So There was another question, but we'll save that for another episode. It lends itself more towards another episode. So, I guess that wraps it up, huh? How many freaking swears does everybody give it? I, I said I give it a three. Yeah, I'd, 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 go, I'd uh, say three, three and a half. Yeah, I'd have to go along with three and a half. I don't want to say three, but I don't want to give it a full four, so I, I think I'll go halfway in between, go three and a half. I probably would say three. I think if I was buying it monthly, I probably would have given it a two. <laughs> but that's only because I would have, I probably would have bailed out of it very early. I, I don't think, uh, not to say that it was horrible, just obviously I would have said, no, this ain't for me. But for reading it like this and... and uh, uh, yeah, three. I'd say a two and a half, just because uh, it kind of just embodies everything about what J. Michael Straczynski brought to Spider-Man that I didn't like with the whole bloodline type stuff. So, yeah, I guess that's, that's not how I should look at it because it should be completely different. But it's hard for me to separate any of that scenes as how it ties into into that. I'm gonna go four. Because I think I'm the only one in the room who's going to actively seek out the next one. Um, and I just plain had fun with it. I had no problems with it at all, and I'm, and I'm ready for more. So I guess that would make it a four. What, um, I did forget to read one. Somebody mentioned something about the dialogue. Is the dialogue, are the, are the bubbles shrunk? The word balloons, do they, do they, I wonder what that, you know, when you, because. I think they're still in proportion as if it was a published in a regular comic. I don't think... So they're the same size as... I think so. so I don't maybe think they that, changed that. That's what I took it as. That would be that would be my assumption, that it's not changed when they print it to this format. When those finished pages are sent to the publisher for the comic, when it's reprinted in these formats, it's not... They don't adjust that. It's the same... It's the same uh, finished work. Just like uh, an absolute editions, they're not monstrous. Oh, yeah. yeah they would be all, everything would be proportional. Right. Yeah, it would be interesting to have a side by side comparison because that because there were I do see some of that every every like it's like whoa there's a lot of word balloons yeah. but that's not that didn't distract me. Um, that's my favorite cover. I think that's four. Is that four? The desert. Yeah, the, desert. Yeah, the one that she's that all would look covers. great on the that's a great it would look great on the walls like a print. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a all the covers were just beautiful. I mean, I thought you know that stuck out to me with Mark Brooks' art as you know much. As well, yeah, I had never really seen much of his art, but when we when he he was at the Baltimore Con and he had yeah. a bunch of his pages on the table, and I stopped and I started looking at him, and I was like, maybe because they were so big and you could see all the detail that he puts in. One somebody in one of the comments you read said about how he packs in the detail. I think that's absolutely true. Those yeah. pages were just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and if you ever see him in a show, check out his stuff that yeah. he does. I mean, it's just beautiful stuff. He's a great artist. When it, it was funny when I was reading that one Amazing Spider Man that had. Diodato and him in it. There for me, it was more. It was jarring, but that's right. because you're comparing it to well, yeah, it was those flashbacks, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it, it just felt weird compared I mean, to the other artwork. Ultimate right. Spider-Man Annual, which he did, which Mark mm-hmm. Brooks did. I mean, it, it just if if that's I could actually look at that and go like, if Mark Bagley left and he would take over, he would take over. I definitely, I'd be all over it. Maybe mm-hmm. they're grooming him, so it could be. Could well, and th- there's nothing to say that if Brian gets the second one, I wouldn't borrow it and read it because. Just like with fables and so many other things, a lot of times it gets better the second volume on. So, Absolutely. You know, like if when Brian gets it, I'll borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. It's like I said, I'm not interested in not reading those. I am interested in reading. I'm just not going to run out and, and, right. and say I got to get this in my next order. And it would be interesting to see where the second yeah. and third. Like, oh, would yeah. I sti- if I still felt the same by the third one? Then obviously this was not meant for me. And but it would be interesting to see if it does grow on you after a while. So we're all borrow Brian's and update later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, moving on to next book of the month. Um, for February, there is a story behind the February selection. Um, we wanted to – some of the people on the forum uh, were, were questioning why uh, we haven't – why do we have to pick a trade that's listed on in-stock trades? Um, for us, the the reason that we want to pick a trade that's from in stock trades is so that we can make sure that you can get your hands on it and that it's affordable for you. I mean, we could say, "Oh, this one we're just picking one and it's not there," and you know, go fend for yourself and find it somewhere. And you you could go to your comic shop, you could order from Amazon, you go to Barnes and Noble, maybe you'll find it, whatever. But if we 
always do it where it's on in stock trades. You never have to worry that you're going to not be able to find it. So then they were saying, well, because there are a bunch of trades, there are a bunch of trades that aren't on in stock trades, especially in the independent world that, you know, they think we should do. And so we went to Cameron and, and we said, Cameron, we want to do Queen and Country from Oni Press. And you have no Oni Press books on your website, and uh, but we want to do it. Can you get it? He said, absolutely. I'll get it for you. No problem. He emailed me a couple, like two days later and said, Brian, I just found out. I went to Diamond and I went to Oni directly. They're out of print. Queen and Country Volume 1 is out of print. So you probably can't even order from Amazon new. You might find it used, but you can't get it new. So I went, okay, well, we don't want to do an out-of-print uh, trade because no one can re- no one can get their hands on it. So, uh, and then but there, there were a couple different volumes of, of Queen and Country Volume 1. I guess there was like some miniseries or something, so uh, it was a little confusing. So we went back and forth over a couple weeks. By the time we had to make a selection, he didn't have time to order anything that he didn't already have in stock. So we picked something that was in stock, but we didn't, it's not like we said, oh, well, we'll just pick this. We put a lot, we have these like hour-long discussions about what book we're going to pick for Book of the Month, so we don't take it lightly. So this month, we picked Wanted, written by Mark Miller and drawn by J.G. Jones and Paul Mounts. It is a top cow book, and uh, it is available on InStockTrades.com for 40% off. If uh, that's where you choose to get it, uh, nice thing about this too is it's just the whole story. Yeah, it's yep, the whole series, mini, mini, six issue mini series, uh, over and done. And has um, a dossier in there, I think, as well. Yeah, it's got a lot of information. Yeah. Has, yeah. And did anybody here read it? I did. You, you're the only one. Yeah, okay. yeah, I bought it. I picked it up when issue three came out. And I went back and bought issues one and two after hearing what I was hearing about it, and um, I bought it and read them all. And, well, and, and I, it. it might have been during a, a game night or something where you guys talked about it, but I didn't know that's what we picked. But I love J.G. Jones' artwork and Mark Miller, you know, to me, how can you go wrong? So I'm, and I never read it, so I'm very interested yeah, to know, read it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for The only it. thing that sucked, and that's the, again, that led to me buying trades, is the fact that it sucked that here is this great book that came out and the industry was receiving it and, and talking so well about it. And then after issue three and four, then all of a sudden there's a huge lag time <laughs> where they put out the dossier as a, as a filler to kind of appease you and such. And, and I don't remember when the next issue came out, but it was a long time in between. And it loses interest. You lose interest in what you're reading. Yeah, that was, that was definitely one. That, there was a huge gap in between. And you're right, it did. It, it, it drove the interest on it down. Yeah. It wasn't like there was a – I mean, there was anticipation for it, but – The enthusiasm and buzz just, like, fell off. After I mean, people that read it, a lot of people stuck with it, but I, you could see like there was just no buzz about it anymore, and, and it just kind of fell by the wayside kind of yeah. thing. So, and, and not to put a uh, <laughs> like a preface on this, but I mean for the discussion. But I'm actually glad we're reading it after the hype. You know, yeah, I think our, sometimes you're a little more. I'm interested uh, to see critical what, what you guys have to open mind you know, yeah. from reading it. Yeah. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm a, I'm anxious to reread it and read it all straightforward instead of reading it monthly like I did before, especially right. having that lag time. So. Looking so, forward to it. So I just want to make sure that all the critics out there who who think that we're caving to the man or something by selecting a trade, that's not our motivation. And there <laughs> will be trades and you know and, and in stock trades was hundred percent ready to order something that they didn't have on the website, put it on the website, make it available. He was gonna put the whole Oni store on there, like get all the Oni stuff, and he might have done that, I didn't look, but Yeah, I thought he mentioned something went up yeah. new, I forget. Yeah, and there is some stuff under other now yeah. uh, that there wasn't before. So he's working on stock and everything. It's his goal. It just takes time and money. And and but the next time we hit independent, hopefully we'll get something that you know is less mainstream than than what we've done so far. So, all right. Well, uh, we'll see you in thirty days. <laughs>